are looking ahead of the general elections, the 2023 general elections. Different activities are going on and will go on up until the very day where we all go out there and cast our ballots for the next set of leaders that will pilot the affairs of this country for the next four years. Well, yesterday, INEC met with some of the key participants for this particular season. And here is a report that reflects some of what transpired yesterday. It is a fourth quarterly consultative meeting of the Independent National Electoral Commission with leaders of political parties who converged at the headquarters of the election management body. The meeting comes after INEC concluded the cleaning up of the voters' register which was laden with several discrepancies. Consequently, some officials of the commission who were involved are now facing the law. The commission deployed thousands of diligent staff for the CVR exercise, and the vast majority of them discharged their duties conscientiously. Unfortunately, a few of them did not. The fictitious registrations were carried out by some of our registration officers involved in the field exercise and could easily be traced. Each registration machine is operated using an access code tied to a dedicated email assigned to a staff. That is therefore an audit trail that gives the total number of persons registered by each official involved in the registration exercise. In some cases, some of them made as many as 40 attempts or more to register one fake voter and yet we are able to detect the shenanigans. As a result, the Commission has so far identified 23 registration officers in, involved in this unethical conduct and disciplinary action against this staff has commenced. The leadership of all the political parties involved in the 2023 general elections were in attendance except the People's Democratic Party as the chairman of the Inter-Party Advisory Council commends efforts of the Commission and cautions against smear campaigns targeted at the leadership of the election management body. To us in IPAC, the real object of the death of Venom being directed at the person of the chairman and institution of the INEC are merely a decoy. The real target of the machinations is the circumvention of the deployment of the bimodal voter accreditation system, BIVAS, the electronic transfer of results, and the other security devices INEC has deftly and painstakingly put in place to enhance the integrity of the electoral process. The meeting goes behind closed doors as the political parties through the Inter-Party Advisory Council believes INEC is well prepared to conduct a credible election in 2023. So one of the key components for a successful general elections is policing. So we're talking about policing the elections today, and we've got two gentlemen, as you may have seen, joining us today to shed some light on what to expect. Uh, Olumiwa Adijabi is a CSP. He's also the force public relations officer. Or well, sitting right beside him is Shino Phillips, who is a CEO of Matchmakers Consult International. They're consulting uh, consultants to the police on the third edition of the police retreat, which will go on soon. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. How are you? Well, Mr. Adijabi, a lot people expect so much from the police, uh, as always, you know, in terms of what to do, how things should turn out for these elections. We imagine that the police is preparing for, for that election. So if you could go ahead and let us into uh, some of the activities of what the police is doing to guarantee or let Nigerians know that you have no need to worry, things will go on well. Well, like, like I always say, every election is a process. It's not a day thing. We've been to the electionary process for a very long time, starting with the registration of parties, Congresses, primaries, and the likes. And we provide inadequate security to manage these processes. Apart from that, the, the police as an institution that is majorly responsible for secu election security management has um, taken the bull by the horn. One, by actually taking our officers and men through the provisions of the electoral acts. You can't police or you can't enforce the law you don't know. So we need to dissect uh, the electoral acts so that officers 
we have full knowledge of the provisions of the Electoral Act 2022 as amended. Uh, precisely on August, 4th of August 2022, we commenced um, training for all officers and men, uh, the rank of DCP downward across the six geopolitical zones in conjunction with the um, Solar Security Company, headed by former Inspector General of Police, IGP Dr. Arasi, Solomon Arasi. And we moved around the country to lecture them on election security management. And this time around, we, uh, we are going to gather a converge on Norway in Nemo State for the third edition of the police conference and retreat, basically in preparation for 2023 general elections. Uh, the theme of the conference and retreat is um, imperative uh, of um, a, a Nigeria police strategic plan for peaceful elections. And uh, we are expecting the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Muhammad Jubari GCFR, to be in attendance. Yes, uh, we confirmed that yesterday, so definitely the President will be there. We are expecting uh, stakeholders in the electioneering, uh, electoral activities, political activities, party chairmen, presidential candidates, civil society organizations. Um, INEC will be there because the chairman is going to have a, a good message. Um, commissioners of police and above. We are expecting like 200 and above officers, CPs, AIGs, and uh, DIGs, including Inspector General of Police. Everybody is involved, and I will be there as well. So we are doing this for us to have knowledge, uh, because without that knowledge, you may not even know what you want to do on the field. And aside from that, the IGP has directed that we should produce um, something like a pocket notebook for all officers, uh, code of conduct for election uh, security, that every officer should know what he's going to do on the field. It's not well, for... Will the members of the public have access no. to that? Uh, so well, they don't have to hold them accountable? Uh, uh, well, it's, it's, I wouldn't know if it's a restricted document, but uh, it's basically for police personnel, for them to know what and what not to do on the field. Uh, well, and um, uh, yeah. we, we, with that, we, we are very optimistic that we don't have any problem for having free, free, and credible okay. uh, during elections come 2023. Incidentally, who was in the way that the alarm was raised about some uh, alleged manipulations of the voter register, but who knows if we'll come to that as we progress. But whether matchmakers, you, there's a role for matchmakers in this. So uh, one wonders, so what exactly is matchmakers okay, doing? Uh, well, uh, as a knowledge-based uh, uh, company, we, from the inception of this program, we, we looked at the institution and we realized that the Nigerian police have a whole lot to do when it comes to the well-being of Nigerians, especially as they interact daily with uh, Nigerians. And so where, when we started, we, we looked at a theme that was suitable for uh, the force, considering the fact that the landscape of crime is changing every day and criminals are you know, devising new ways of not only committing crime, but also beating uh, security agencies. So we realize that policemen, are, especially at the very uh, senior ranks, are always very, very busy, not having time to study, to even read a book, unlike some of the agencies, because they daily interact with the public, and we felt there's, there's need to have a, 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 a forum, a place where, a platform, where they could come rob mines, where they can interact with the Inspector General of Police and look at ways of dealing with crimes as they evolve. And so we started uh, in Lagos with a theme on predictive policing. And you see gradually we're taking it to this point where we're very much concerned about our elections where, because with our elections, generally with our democracy, I think that we've been bedeviled over the years with thuggery violence and usually stealing of uh, election boxes and all that so but is this pardon me is this training for officers yes for officers no well of course you know when we, we, we with 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 the cps and above we know that by the time they are trained with the kind of resource persons we have they'll be able to you know get this across to to the but, but you know that the rank and file is always a challenge. Of That's course, the daily of course, we, we have that. We have them. Yeah, we have that. We have them. Uh, in, we we have serious consideration for them. It, it's a it's a deliberate, well articulated plan that if you feed the head right, then the body can 
as well uh, fit in. So we have a plan that from, from this, uh, as he also rightly said, mm -hmm. Training started with the rank and files and those of uh, the, C, the, the, the chief superintendent of police and others. So we have, the, we have this huge plan and I thank the inspector general of police for his consideration that from this point it will come down to the rank and files. The elections we know are a process. It's not a one day event. Yeah. Um, we also know that you know, leading up to that main day where yeah. people will actually cast their ballot, there are a number of events. Campaigns are one of them. We're already beginning to record some violence, mm -hmm. uh, the election campaigns, and we've seen a few of them. I think in Zamfara, yeah, one person yeah. is reported mm -hmm. to have lost his life um, as a result of campaigning going on there. Uh, even then, the state government is saying that part of the reason why they're putting a ban on campaigning is because of security. So when you say that, you know, you, you are looking at the fact that you're looking at a, a place where everything runs smoothly, are you factoring in what we're already beginning to see in the campaigns? And maybe we could see some more of it in further campaigns. I think even in Lagos, so there was some violence recorded. Yeah, in Plateau. Um, in Plateau as well. Um, in Kaduna, we've also seen that as well. So when you look at some of these symptoms, because I want to believe that they're symptoms, do you think that they are pointing to a bigger ailment and are you predicting some cure or prescribing some cure for that? Well, well in, in, in conflict management, there are things we refer to as early warning signs. These are signs and indications that we may likely have issues like this if you don't need them in the board on time. And that's why you... They collect that when they were signing the peace accord at their neck office, the IGP, at the SEC the other time, the IGP read out certain things to warn political actors, uh, political parties um, on certain things. And I think it's important for us to know that if we are told we want to have um, a very seamless process uh, towards 2023 general elections, political parties, candidates, and their supporters must work in line with the provisions of an electoral act and other um, extant laws in, in the land. The, the incidences so far uh, give us the impression. Studio, but um, well, still talking about something new, uh, Mr. Adejobi, uh, INEC also made it clear that a huge number of people that are going to be part of the elections ahead are young people. And we both know our history uh, well, with young people, Mr. Adejobi. We both know uh, the history that Nigerian police has had with young people over within the past two years, even more than that, but which culminated over the past two years. And there are those of them who feel, as far as they are concerned, the police hasn't really, quote unquote, learned or, you know, the lessons of 2020 and perhaps even gotten the memo that some of those things that they campaigned against are still happening. Yes, SARS was proscribed, SWAT came on board, but it would seem like not much has changed. So I'm wondering how the police is interfacing with young people to ensure that they can also be factored into the thinking of the men whose boots are on the ground at the various polling centers all over the place because we both know that the trust quotient is still very, very low. Well, let, let me clearly say this, that we are not having issues with the, the youth generally in this country. Uh, I think the problem is many of them don't understand the legal provisions and the legal framework within which we operate. If you don't understand the legal framework, of, of your country, you're going to be having issues with security operatives. Not only the police, any law enforcement officer will be having issues with you if you don't understand what the law is saying. We, we, the law is clear and there's no sentiment in law. Uh, we have electoral acts. Uh, that act has made provisions for certain things, what you should do and what you should not do. So if you run foul of this, this act, definitely the police will pick you, irrespective of your age, your ethnic group or whatever, uh, where you come from. So, so far, you are, you, are, you are criminally liable under the law as provided for in the law that once you're above, above 18, you can you can't think on your own and of course you can be fired if you go uh, out, of, out, of, out, of the, out of your way. So we don't have issues with the youth generally. I, we, we talk to them. Uh, the youth uh, activities are basically under the purview of the first PRO and I engage them on a regular basis, nuns, all of them. But we cannot uh, rule out the fact that 
Some of them are having issues with our officers on the road. Uh, checking of phones has been the problem. Uh, uh, brutality, harassment, and the likes. And for sincerely, in the last um, six, seven months, we've been trying our best possible to sanitize the system, to punish those who have, um, who have helped in many areas. And we've made this known to the general public. It's, that error has gone that the policeman will do something and you say you cannot trace him. We don't have unknown police. Every policeman is known. And we have, uh, we have uh, educated Nigerians to the, to, to the extent that they should be getting across to us when they have issues with them. You can't rule out the fact that you don't have some of these um, erring officers on the road who actually misbehave because they think nobody is seeing them. But thank God for digital, digital media. People have been sending videos, pictures to us, and we act accordingly. We cannot rule out the fact that some of them uh, will think nobody is seeing me, I can do what I, I, I want to do. But we are uh, appealing to Nigerians to always get across to us, we do the needful. Uh, by judging, profiling somebody on the road is another problem. That I have deadlock, I put earring on, I dress somehow, uh, they see me as a criminal. It is not professional. We have told our men that if somebody is dressing that way, all you need is to search. If at all you have uh, any reason to suspect that person, just search the person. You have the powers in the law to stop and search anybody. Search the person. If not incriminating found, let the person go. Having tattoo on them is not a criminal offense. It is a way of just expressing yourself as a young man. Even some, some um, elderly ones have tattooed on them. So we are talking to our officers and men. I've created a platform for almost all of them. Uh, the Spectre Rack and File across the country. I'm having more than 220 something thousand on that uh, platform. I engage them. I talk to them. Because before now, the IGP noticed that some of his directives are not actually taken to them. Um, at that level across the country. And the IGP empowered, uh, approved that I, I should be able to interface in with them uh, on regular basis. Well, CSP, I if I could problem, just come in I now. To them. But still, if, 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 let me just say this, if Jesus right. Christ was having 12 disciples, and one of them decided to, to, to misbehave, just imagine the ratio we're going to have if you're having more than 300,000 policemen. We expect us to see how some of them that still uh, want to key to that concept of uh, anime in sociology. A deviant will always be a deviant. But the mechanisms must be there for us to checkmate that deviant who wants to soil our name, who wants to bring uh, the Nigerian police force uh, to this refuge. Right, just quickly, because you, you talked about you know, getting tips from social media, acting on them. And, and I mean, some will say the police has been quite uh, up to task in recent days, ensuring that they follow through. And you know, the incident of the bullion van you talked about, I, I think it's important to get as a sort of update, because I recall people have clamored for this. They recall the images they saw uh, on social media, which was sort of a tip uh, in the residence of now the presidential candidate of the APC asking that, well, as the police investigated and all of that. The same way you said that you wanted to investigate the tip you got on a bullion van. Is, is any work being done on that or essentially that is water under the cap carpet and we're focusing on the 2023 elections? Well, I, I, I refer to the case of bullion van. Uh, it's a peculiar case in Noshogo. I was on ground in Noshogo and somebody called me that he saw a bullion van that brought money to a particular polling unit, I think a Likuwado area, or Laia area in Ushubu. And uh, incidentally, I was at Okefia, very close to that place, and I told the DPO to proceed. Uh, it was just an alarm anyway, because we got there, we couldn't seal anything. If there are, there are cases they, they want the government or the police to actually look into, to investigate, we don't act on speculations. If you have your facts, put up um, a letter, like I always advise them on Twitter, that when they engage me in, in issues like this, that somebody abused me yesterday, uh, some so person attacked us when we have mentioned his social name. I said, come, if you are reporting to me on Twitter, it's not going to help because I am not a police station, I not the formation of my own. I can only uh, guide you on how you go about your, your, your complaints. And I always advise them to put up uh, any write-up, petition to the Office of the Special General Police, because anything um, electoral uh, issue, political issue, is a very sensitive matter. You need to have a document to work on, put up a petition across for us, and we're going to act. So I'm not saying um, I, I saw a picture or anything uh, as far as William Van on Twitter or social media, no. I actually referred to a case that I personally experienced in Oshobo during the uh, off-season uh, off election in um, Oshun State. In, in other words, even if uh, as some opposition uh, parties tell us that different states, that some CPs 
in those states are working with the ruling party in those states. So they have to follow the same process in reporting the matter to the police, right? They have, they have, they have, they have the right to report to the IGP. If we have uh, reasons to, to, to suspect any commission of police, everybody is a human being. We are, we are complete homo sapiens sapiens. We think alike. We have the same criminal capacity. So you don't expect somebody not to do like a human being. Also, if a CP is trying to fraternize unnecessarily with a particular person, complain to the Inspector General of Police. We're going to investigate. We have, the you know one thing, the funniest thing about police is that our FIB men still write reports on us. So if you have a commission of police in the state, the OCSIB, no matter how close he is to you in that state, writes reports on you on a daily basis. I sent straight to the AIGFIB, Abu Sunni. The AIGFIB will escalate that to the Inspector General of Police without any interference anywhere. Even the CP will not know. If you then are one with the CP in the office, it doesn't mean you are not writing report. And the FIB a pretty to us, it's always a threat to us because they, they believe that yeah. they write on us every day. As I am as a PRO, they write on my activities on a daily basis. Even our own operatives, that's one thing about the police. So if a CP is not doing, uh, is not professional enough, I think they, they can contact the IGP, contact people there, they write a report on them. On a daily basis, there are some areas now that we are actually trying to mm -hmm. assess the activities of the commissioners of police there. Now okay. the IG is to say, okay, let me see this. And definitely, if, before we have the general elections, yeah. there might likely be some changes here and there for one reason or the other. If there are complaints uh, against certain commissioner of police, the IGB is the one to, to okay. move. Uh, that, that, that's CP out of that place. So people can actually believe yeah. in our system that when they, when they report to the IG, the need will be done. Let's wind down with this, Mr. Phillips. What kind of resource persons are we uh, uh, will be here? Are they former electoral officials or something like that who have experience in yeah. things like this? Someone like Mikey Guinea, for instance. And of course, uh, with media, we have uh, the chairman of channels, John Momo. And then we have um, Ross, who is uh, an expert in analytics. So we have about 10 resource persons, so and, they are so and, and then we have that for uh, cybercrime. We're working hand in hand with Interpol. And so, so interestingly, I mean, uh, the kind of technology that Interpol will employ during this uh, election, we surely amaze Nigerians. All right. So we have very tough, very sound uh, resource persons. Okay, so um, uh, to whom much is given, they say much is expected. Yep. So we'll be expecting a lot more from the police uh, concerning policing the elections. We well, have to thank you for coming on. Olumi Iwa Adejobi is a CSP and Force Public Relations Officer. Shana Phillips is the CEO of Matchmakers Consult International. They are consulting for uh, consultants to the police on this third edition of the police retreat. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on and thank all the best. You. Thank, thank you very much. We will be back in just a moment, but from Lagos, join us again.